Car's on the hot heat, and there's a recently fired shotgun underneath the passenger seat. He was a pig. He had loan sharking, narcotics, bookmaking, prostitution. Look, I know you're in mourning, so I'll get right to the point. Who killed your boss? It's too low to kick and too wet to step on. This is a murder case, a homicide. My murder case. And he raped her.
Here on the Vista! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Monte Vista birthday celebration! And let me introduce you to the man who makes all this wonderful world possible, Mr. Max Santiago! Once again, we gather to celebrate our community on the day that Monte Vista became a part of the city of Los Angeles. But today, today is more than a birthday party in honor of our beautiful community. Today, we also celebrate our citizens. This one's for you, Elena. God, forgive me. Anything like a firecracker or maybe a car backfiring? Oh, nope. All of a sudden, Max looks like somebody jerked him from behind, and down he went. No, I didn't hear any shots. Matter of fact, I don't believe anybody did. But when Max fell, I realized what had happened. I looked around. It took a while, but finally I noticed something. You see that building up there? Yeah. See that open window? Well, I know this never would like the back of my hand, every inch of it. And those windows have been shut tight ever since that building was condemned. Thank you, Father. Thank you very much. Excuse me. I think I found out where the shots came from. Yeah. Come on. Thanks, folks, very much. No fingerprints, no powder marks, no shells laying around the floor. Apparently, this guy has some sort of cloth wrapped around his feet. What else did he leave us, Ruben? Two drops of 40 weight, tracks from a bike. The imprints on the floor say ripstop nylon, sleeping bag, so he may have spent the night. Down the steps, out the door, seven or eight seconds, lost in traffic. The evidence indicates that this hit was planned weeks, maybe even months before the fiesta, but definitely based on the celebration. The thing was practically surgical. I mean, the guy didn't leave anything except for tire tracks. Although we did find two hairs that may or may not have come from the hitman's head. And apparently he had some sort of uh, cloth or sacking on his boots. Uh, shoe size seemed to be somewhere between a 9 and a 12. So it takes a hitman a few minutes to do what OCID couldn't do in 10 years. Well, you weren't trying to kill him, Dan. You were just trying to put him in the slam. Sometimes that takes a little longer, you know? What's it going to be, Captain? I still say OCID should handle this case. What's the decision? Well, the Organized Crime Intelligence Division will assist. Hunter and McCall will lead the team in charge. It's a homicide case, Sergeant. Homicide will deal with it. But don't worry, there'll be plenty of opportunity for you to help out. Captain, this was an organized crime execution. Santiago had everything within 20 miles under tight organized control. He had loan sharking, narcotics, bookmaking, prostitution. Hell, you name it, you couldn't open up an ice cream parlor without an okay from Santiago. This is an OCID case, sir. Hunter, how do you feel about this? Well, look, Charlie, we're going to need a lot of help from everybody, certainly, and most of all, Dan. 
Maybe you can tell us some names of some people on the inside. Perhaps there was somebody that thought that Santiago was expendable. There are three guys who fit that description, McCall, and I know all three of them. That's the point I'm trying to make here. It's a homicide case, Bolton, period. Now, if you'll all excuse me, I got some work to do here. So I'll get right to the point. Who killed your boss? Look, our organized crime detail has three suspects on their list. I'm sitting with all three of them. So, me being a much more open-minded guy, I have an idea would benefit you if you talk to me. We gave statements. Why don't you read them? Oh, I read them. You were standing right next to Max when he got gunned down, all right. The interesting thing I found is that when the shooting started, you guys didn't pull your guns. I don't own a gun. Neither does Miguel here or Paco. Now, why are you here? Well, you see, anytime someone like Max Santiago gets gunned down, we have a tendency to look real close at the beneficiaries. Max was a man of commerce, a business genius who took real good care of us. We had jobs, good, high-paid jobs, which we don't have no more. High-paying job? <laughs> well, you say so. You see, Max was a wealthy one, not you guys. He was paying you out of petty cash. Now, look, let's talk women. Did Max uh, scorn anybody lately? Max was seeing my sister. He loved her very much. Well, where can I find her? At home. She's still crying. And if you bother her... What? What are you going to do about it? You know, you guys don't seem to get it, do you? I'm paid to find the guy who killed Max Santiago. And if you guys don't talk to me, I'm going to start to wonder why. Maybe we want to find him first, you think of it? Oh, I thought about that. And then I thought, maybe one of them... No, maybe all three of them hired to kill her, huh? What is your name? Sergeant. Well, Sergeant, I manage this restaurant for Max. My good friend Miguel here ran Max's motels, and Paco here took care of the liquor stores. Who owns it now? La Senora Santiago, Max's mother. He left her everything he owned. And we're hoping that she won't sell so that we get to keep our jobs, but we don't know. I don't think she's going to be able to sell the prostitution, the bookmaking, the loan sharking. You're insulting the memory of a dead friend. I'm not going to allow that. And you're asking questions without reading us our legal rights. Hey, look, fellas, like I told you from the very beginning, this is a friendly visit. I'll read you your rights when I come back to arrest one of you, or all of you, for murder. Adios. excitement around here yesterday, huh? You mean the fiesta or the shooting? I guess both. Were you there? Everybody in Monte Vista goes to the fiesta. Did you know that guy? You know, the, the man that got killed at Santiago? If you live in this neighborhood, you knew Max Santiago. I lived here all my life. You better get that gauge checked. This was almost full. Yeah, I know. Sergeant McCall, homicide. Oh. <laughs> You're Jonathan Pruitt, right? Jack, please. Only my mom calls me Jonathan. Jack, sorry. Um, our computer gave us 11 names of Monte Vista residents who'd had trouble with Santiago in the past, and you just happened to be number seven. There was assault and battery charge filed against you by Santiago himself. Oh, my God. I had completely forgotten about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I beat him up pretty good. <laughs> Took a few shots myself. Well, that was 10 or 12 years ago. I, I'm not a suspect. Well, we're just checking out all the names the computer kicked out. Charges were dropped, right? Uh, 
Sergeant, I would love to be able to stand here and talk to you for the rest of the afternoon, but I got a Dodge van over there in intensive care. I got three more jobs behind that. I close at seven, then I get on my motorcycle and I ride down to a little place called Las Flautas, where they make the best enchiladas con chili verde in the whole city. Why don't you join me? I'll tell you everything that you never wanted to know about Maximilian Santiago. Dutch? No, Mexican. <laughs> seven o'clock. Yeah, okay, seven's fine. They're asking the wrong person. I don't know nothing about Max's business, and I don't know who killed him. Except it wasn't my brother. That much I know for sure. Well, maybe you know something that might be able to help me. Help you? Yeah, you know, help me find Max's killer. I don't give a diddly squat who killed Max. How long were you and Max together? I don't know. Two years? Two years. Uh, is there anything at all about Max you'd like to tell me at this time? He was a pig. Mr. Pig. Yeah, anything else? No. He didn't talk to me. He just... Hey! I told you not to mess with my sister. Yeah, you did. You got no business in here with her alone. She's a juvenile. How old are you, Lupi? Seventeen. You lied to me, man. You said she was crying. You got a permit for that? Huh? Thanks. That had to be the worst drunk of my life. Any special reason why? That was the 10th high school reunion. A bunch of guys trying to outdo each other in the macho department. Hmm. Now, Max had uh, graduated just a year before we did, so we decided we'd go over to his place and finish up the celebration. And for some reason, he thought that we were disturbing his customers and asked us to leave. Ooh, I can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> well. I threw the first punch, I admit it. And he went to the hospital and I went to the drunk tank. But he dropped the charges, right? I went over the next day, I apologized, he accepted. That's the end of the story. Nice of him to um, let you off the hook, huh? Max never did anything nice in his life. I guess that means you don't like him too much. Well, uh, I'll admit I thought he was a... Uh, Renoso. What is that? Renoso is something that's too low to kick and too wet to step on. <laughs> Other than that, he was a great guy. <laughs> I came back from Vietnam. There were bars on my mom's window, and my kid brother had been busted for possession. And you blame Santiago? Yeah, I do. Any uniformed cop in this neighborhood would tell you Santiago took over Monte Vista at the end of the Vietnam War, and he turned it into a place where he could get anything he wanted, from a $10 bag of rock to a teenage girl for sex. And if feeling that way makes me a suspect, you got about a thousand other people out there who feel exactly the same. You were right, you know, these were great. Oh, aren't they? Yeah, but I don't think I should eat for another week after this now. <laughs> And, and you have to let me pick up the check, okay? No, no, no. You couldn't pay for it even if you wanted to. The chef is my mother-in-law. It's funny. I am. Um, I uh, thought you were single. I wonder why. Well, my wife died uh, about ten months ago. Oh, I'm sorry. What's your status? Are you married? Are you single? I guess you could say we have something in common. Uh, my husband died. Uh, he was killed about five years ago. He was a police officer. I'm sorry. You have any children? No. You? No. Not for one of trying. Alina was a good Catholic girl. The match on the tire treads wasn't even close, to her. What about Santiago's people? Well, they were nothing but hired hands. Santiago's death just made more problems for them. 
You know, there's some political pressure building on this case. The chief is leaning toward me dumping this case on OCID. Yeah, well, give it to OCID if you think they can do a better job, but I doubt it. That's why I'm leaving you two on it. You're very smart. <clears throat> makes you think that Paco and McGill didn't kill Mac. He treated them like dirt. Yeah, they may be stupid, but they're not that stupid. They depended on Max. I'm sorry. And so did I. Hmm? Well, maybe everything will turn out okay, huh? I don't think so. Max getting killed was the worst thing could have happened to any of us. Miguel, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, the guys who pulled this caper, Charlie, are a pair of real geniuses. They had footprints, two eyewitnesses, and a license plate number. Are you sure your witness has made an ID that will stand up in court? Yep. Well, where are the witnesses now? At home. They'll be in any time we want them. Yeah. He's right here. A call. Oh. What do you got? The witness got the license plate wrong, but not so wrong we couldn't find the car. Uh -huh. Where is it? It's abandoned down at a corner at 12th and Seville. Car's on the hot sheet, and there's a recently fired shotgun underneath the passenger seat. Run all prints against Miguel Ortiz and Paco Rivera. Good. Well, I'll either be in the car or at Max Santiago's restaurant. Do you remember anybody inviting us to the sit with us? Hey, where's Guerrero? If I knew, I wouldn't be telling you. Hey, 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 Miguel, Miguel, calmate. I mean, the man's just trying to do his job. Get up to it, man. Luis will be here later. Now, uh, he's a little late. 40 minutes late, so we ordered. Oh, 40 minutes late, not 25, not 45 minutes late. What are you guys doing watching the clock? Hey, we don't have to talk to you. No, 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 you don't, so I'll talk to you. Your friend Guerrero was dead as a doornail. Dead. I mean, somebody killed him or what? He was killed? Like Max? No, 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 not like Max. He was killed by amateurs. We have the car and the gun. Yeah, Luis was a friend. All right, he will be missed. Remember, we're next. Remember, we need police protection. No need to ask. Are you Sergeant Hunter? Yeah, I am. There's a phone call for you at the end of the bar. Thanks, honey. Don't be afraid. Thanks very much. Go. They were smart enough to wipe off the car and the gun, but we still got a nice, clean Ortiz print from the cartridges they left behind. Is Ortiz there? Yeah, they're here. Oh, wait a minute. They left. I let them get away. I gotta call you back. You didn't pay your bill, mister. <laughs> This is Zillow 56. Go ahead, 56. I'm in pursuit of two 187 suspects proceeding eastbound on Salamanca Boulevard at the 600 block. Vehicle is a late model Oldsmobile, blue over white, L56 out. 10 4, L56.
kids? Yeah. Look carefully. Do you recognize any of these men? The one in the middle. Well, which one was he? He fired the gun. That's fine, honey. You did just fine. Next group, please. Can I have a word with you outside for a minute, Dan? Sure. Just relax, kids. I'll be right back. Yeah? Do you want to tell me about that in there? What, the lineup? Yeah, the lineup. Hey, Hunter, why don't you just cool it, huh? I knew where to find those two guys, and you didn't. I booked them in at 5 a.m. this morning, and I picked up the two kids before they left for school. Why didn't you call me? Hey, roused you out of bed at 5 a.m.? It's done all the time. Hunter, you know the pressure that's building up on this case. Yeah? Yeah, Commander Kane's demanding action, and so's Devane. So I moved too fast here? Hey, I'm sorry about that. Let me just tell you one thing. This is a murder case, a homicide. My murder case. You should have called me, Dan. Look, we pretty well know that Rivera and Ortiz murdered Guerrero, right? Where do you think that puts us in relationship to the Santiago killing? Case is closed. You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Guerrero contracts a hit on Santiago. Rivera and Ortiz waste Guerrero. You guys got a hit guy out there someplace you probably never find. The pressure's off. You know something you're full of it. Yeah, but the pressure's off. Let's get this over with. Okay, guys. Is there anybody in this group? The second one. Can I see him from the side? Sure. Okay, everybody. Half turn to the right, please. Yeah, the second one. He's the driver. So Rivera drove and Ortiz did the firing. We've got double eyewitness confirmation plus fingerprint evidence. This is good work, Sergeant. Thanks. So, on the Santiago case, we've got an outstanding suspect, a hitman. But with Guerrero dead, the case is a very cold one, right? No, it is not a cold case. Hey, Hunter, if you're ticked off about me jumping Yeah, I am ticked off about that, Dan. And just because you got the two idiots to kill Guerrero, that doesn't mean you can forget about Santiago. What do you think? It takes some kind of genius to hire a hitman? Guerrero was smart enough to know one thing. If anything ever happened to Max, they'd all be washing cars for a living. Captain. We checked Guerrero's bank balance. He had $4,900 with no large withdrawals in the last year. Now, come on. These two killings are worlds apart. I mean, we're talking about entirely different leagues here. So what? You hire a hitman, you're going to get a professional job. Well, thank you very much. Ortiz and Rivera say that Guerrero hired the hit on Max. Now, why should we believe them? The DA's not going to buy it either. I don't think the pressure's off. Look, I'm not trying to shut you down on the Santiago case. But Fulton Steer here makes sense to me. Charlie, those three flunkies had it made. Guerrero knew that. Well, those other two dips obviously didn't think so. Those other two dips didn't think, period. the altar boys up here for picnics. We still do. Let's walk, Jack. I suggested the park because I felt you'd refuse to meet me at the church. Father, I would have been happy to meet you at the church. What's on your mind? Max Santiago. You killed him, Jack. And I feel responsible, of course. Why? Because I told you what he did to Elena. All you told me was that 
Elena hadn't been unfaithful to me. That she'd been raped. You didn't tell me, Michael. You found out it was Santiago. Was it from Miguel Ortiz's sister? Even if I knew that it was Max Santiago, that doesn't prove that I killed him. You killed him, Jack. And for the sake of your immortal soul, I want you to go to the police. Father, you're quick to judge other people, but what about what you did? You repeated to me something that you learned in the confessional. Elena came to me and asked my blessing for an abortion. That is not a confession. And Elena telling me that Santiago had raped her and she was pregnant, that is also not a confession. She had committed no sin. And I had every right to tell you after Elena died what she told me. Why didn't you tell me before she killed herself? The only reason I told you at all is because I saw your face when the autopsy showed she was pregnant. And I didn't want you to go through the rest of your life believing she'd been unfaithful to you. And so I did tell you, to my eternal regret, because now you've committed a cold and calculated murder. And then Miguel Ortiz and Paco Rivera have committed another. And God only knows where it'll all I'm stop. I'm not going to the police, Father. And neither are you. Elena told you, you told me, and that's where it's going to end. So you could escape judgment? You're a priest, Father, not a cop. I just wish things were as simple as that, Jack. Oh, well, if they're not, they sure as hell ought to be. What's your source on this, Bordy? I don't believe that you asked me that, Hunter. What is my source? How reliable is your information? It is a consensus of opinion, my friend. Nobody who knows how the world spins believes that it was a business hit. A jealous husband or, or, or the father or brother of some child that Santiago peddled to a Bel Air customer? I mean, that is how the cognoscenti of crime view the act. Sporty, I want to thank you for your time. Sergeant McCall would like to thank you. Uh, the pleasure was non-existent. Once again, I have the forces of truth, justice, and the American way. Sergeant Hunter? Well, uh, Lupe Ortiz. This is Miguel's sister, Lupe. This is Sergeant McCall. I need to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Lupe is only 17 years of age, so we will be needing a chaperone. Would you like to join us in the interrogation room? I'm uh, worried about what will happen to my brother. He had nothing to do with killing Mac. He didn't. I think a man named Jack Poo would kill Max. You have anything that might prove that? No. But just over a year ago, his wife Elena came to see Max to get us okay so uh, her mother could open up a little restaurant. Max wanted Elena real bad starting in high school because uh, she was beautiful and and didn't like him. And uh, there she was in his office above his restaurant uh, asking for a favor. Max said, sure, Lena's mother could open up a restaurant. And uh, then he tried to kiss her and she slapped him. And he raped her. Were you there when this happened? Yes. And Max did this in front of you? Yes. Lupe, Max Santiago's record shows no sign of any rape charges. Elena told me not to tell nobody. She said if her husband found out, he would kill Max. And he did. Did you tell Jack Pruitt about the rape? I didn't tell nobody. I'm... Jack must have figured it out. I don't know. I'm gonna take a little ride downtown. Uh, I'll get back in touch with you. Lupe, just relax. We know your brother Miguel did not kill Max Santiago, okay? 
I'll uh, talk to you later. Jack Pruitt? Right. Sergeant Hunter, Metropolitan Police. I was wondering if I might have a, a word with you about last Sunday's shooting. Sure, sure. Come on in. Uh, sit down back here. Have a seat. Uh, can I get you something? Uh, I've got a warm beer somewhere, I think. No, I'm fine. Thanks, Jack. I just need a little bit of your time, is all. I understand you had a nice little conversation with my partner, Sergeant McCall, Monday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice lady. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. She was mentioning that, uh, that uh, you and your wife uh, were unable to have children. I, I don't remember her telling me that. Did she read you your rights? No, we just had a friendly conversation. Well, you do know that you have the right to remain silent. If you give up that right, anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. You also have the right to have an attorney present. Do you understand that, Jack? Yeah, sure. I, I just don't know where you're getting at. Uh, ten months ago, your, your wife committed suicide. I believe it was a sleeping pill overdose. Yeah, that's right. And uh, the autopsy report showed that she was uh, three months pregnant. Was there a, uh, was there a suicide note, Jack? No. You been talking to Father Cusack about this? See, my wife told Father Cusack that she had been raped. And after she, uh, Took her own life. Father Cusack told me about it. But he didn't tell me who. Who'd done it. So you didn't answer my question. Did Father Cusack tell you this? No, he didn't, Jack. I haven't talked to Father Cusack. I'm glad of that. He and I were very, very close for a long time. So I take it I'm a suspect in the murder of Max Santiago? Yes, you are. Do you think I should get an attorney? Yes, I do. Well, it's going to be a long drive back to the station. Uh, could I use your bathroom? Uh, yeah, sure. It's just down the hall. Thanks a lot, Jack. You're pretty good going. If, uh, if you need to get a hold of me for any reason, you can reach me at that number. I thought you were going to uh, arrest me. Or should I? No. No, not in my opinion. 
I think the district attorney might agree with you at this point in time. I still suggest you get yourself an attorney. Hey, Ruben. Do me a favor, would you? Check these hairs against the one we found at the crime scene. Sure, honey. Where'd you get this hair? Why? It's a perfect match, that's why. Oh, uh, I went back to the scene of the crime and uh, looked around a little bit more and I found a couple hairs. Thanks. Hi. You awake? Well, I am now. What time is it anyway? Uh, I need to talk to you. Are you alone? Yes, I am. What's going on? I'll be there in 15 minutes. All we have is two hairs. No motive. We can't even prove he knew Santiago raped his wife. So what are you trying to say? Look, do you want to forget that you found the evidence of Pitch Pruitt in the room the shots came from? Well, that's just my point. We don't have enough evidence to convict this guy. The captain is going to say that we have probable cause to arrest Pruitt, and that's our job. Even if we both want to look the other way. Well, it uh, certainly wouldn't be the first time two cops look the other way. Yeah, but I don't know how much longer I could keep being a cop if I did that. I don't know, look, maybe you and I think that Pruitt did society a favor here by just bucking the system, by taking matters into his own hands. But the bottom line is, is if you and I look the other way, then we're no better than he is. Look, I know that. I do know that. Okay. I'm just tired of seeing Pruitt suffer. I'm just tired of it. I think he suffered enough. Get any sleep last night? No. Doesn't it look like it? Yeah. I didn't sleep too well myself. So did you come to a decision based on what we were talking about until the wee hours of the morning? Yes, I did. We're both still here. <laughs> we certainly are. I have decided that I'm going... You got some place we could talk in private? I haven't had much peace of mind these past few days. Or sleep, either. This morning at 6 o'clock, there was a knocking on my door. It was uh, Father Cusack. Came by to have a little chat about my immortal soul. I guess he's been looking out for it ever since he baptized me. I talked to him about your visit yesterday. And how I had the feeling that you knew that I... Anyway, I wound up making my first confession since before Elena died. And afterward, I felt peace. I felt real peace. 
First time since I decided that I was going to kill Jack. Jack, just a second. second. Now, you recall yesterday I read you your right to your home. Recall that? Now, you do have the right to have an attorney present. Yeah. I suggest you do that right now. You can use my phone. Thanks. Yeah, I guess I better do that. It's really a coincidence seeing Mike Snow here today, isn't it? How did you uh, happen to get hooked up with Jack Pruitt, anyway? Well, if I didn't know it was illegal, I'd swear you referred him to me. How do you think it's going to go? What have you got? It's a lot of evidence, Mike, a lot of hard evidence. And we can get more. Well, knowing you two, I don't doubt that. But don't bother, because I'm going for a dim cap defense. If I can't prove diminished capacity after what that poor man went through, his wife raped, made pregnant by a creep like Santiago, and then taking her own life because of it. If I can't win this case on diminished capacity, I'm going to join the enemy and run for district attorney. Good luck. Well, there goes another closed case. Hey, you know, when we were inside there, you were... You were going to tell me something right when Pruitt came in. What was that? Uh-huh. Yeah, I couldn't quit either. Hunter, where'd you get this tie? Out of your closet. 